Have you ever been studying for an exam and felt like this? If so, you've come to the right place. Dr. Perkins is here to help you. With tips and explanations that will not just help you learn the information, but master it for years to come. Alright, so today we're going to be talking about blood donation, particularly the ABO system and who can donate to who. Alright, so when we talk about blood donation, first thing we need to deal with is what is blood? And so your blood isn't just a random mixture of stuff, right? And so the two major parts of blood that we're going to be dealing with is your plasma. This is the liquid part of blood. This is what your red blood cells and so on are floating in. And then we got our red blood cells. Right? So these are the cells that are moving oxygen from our lungs to our body, moving carbon dioxide from our body back to our lungs. So when you need a blood transfusion, unless otherwise specified, right, unless we're saying, hey, this is what we're talking about, we're talking about our red blood cells. Um, you know, sometimes we will donate plasma, and that's going to be important. I'll talk about that on a later video. So... Let's deal with our red blood cells. So not everybody's red blood cells are the same. So somebody with type A blood, right? You notice on the red blood cells, we've got these little circle things, right? That is the A antigen. Your immune system gonna look at the thing and you know, your immune system is gonna be okay with it. Why? Because your immune system does not attack normal healthy body tissue. But if my immune system were to see this, you'd be like, what the heck is that thing? That must be an infection or cancer. And so it's going to attack it. Charge! All right. Now, right here, this is type B blood. And so you look at, these are the B antigens. All right. And so what do you have right here? Well, once again, that's the B antigen, right? Your immune system is going to be okay with it. Why? Because you don't attack your own body. If you do, you got a problem, right? But my immune system is going to look at that and say, what the heck is this thing? Attack! Now, type AB blood, they got the worst of both worlds. They have both the A antigen and the B antigen, right? And so, you know, if you were to give me this, my immune system would be like, ugh, this is totally messed up. I got to do something about this, right? Uh, now, your immune system is going to be fine with it. Why? We don't attack our own blood. All right, here is type O blood. Notice we don't have any of the A or the B antigen on the surface. And so there's nothing for anybody's immune system to attack. All right, so we talked about how the immune system uh, wants to attack these antigens that are on the red blood cells, right? Now, how do we know that? Well, one of the big things is every single day when you eat your food, you're actually being exposed to these A and B antigens, right? Now, it's not a good idea for your immune system to attack normal healthy body tissue. And so what's going to happen if you tape a blood, you're exposed to a antigen in your food, your system, pff, not a problem, totally normal, not going to lift a finger about it. But when it sees this B antigen, okay, we got a problem. This is an infection. And so your immune system has developed the anti-B antibody. Likewise, somebody with type B blood, whenever they eat their food, once again, they'll be exposed to the A and the B antigen. The B antigen not a problem i got that that's normal don't worry about that but when they see the antigen they say okay this is either infection or cancer and so it has the anti-a antibody all right somebody with type a b blood once again they eat meals they're exposed to a and b antigen not a problem. i already have the antigen already got the b antigen leave it alone all right um and so they're not going to make anti-a or anti-b antibodies now they'll produce other antibodies. So for example, if you have chickenpox, they're going to have anti-chickenpox antibodies. They'll have antibodies against everything else that you've been exposed to, just not the A or the B antigen. Why? Because I don't want to produce antibodies against my own red blood cells. Now, what about type O blood? Well, type O blood, I'm being exposed to the A and B antibody, but I do not have the A antigen. I do not have the B antigen, right? No A or B antigen like type AB blood. And so I'm gonna produce anti-A or anti-B antibodies. I'm gonna be producing both of those. 
Why? Because whenever I see the A antigen, that's an infection. Whenever I see the B antigen, that's an infection. So where are these antibodies going to be at? Well, they're going to be in plasma. They're going to be in that top layer of blood, right? Um, and so one of the things that happens is when we give blood, we're going to spin down the blood. And we're going to separate the red blood cells from the plasma. Once again, the plasma has the antibodies. The red cells have the antigens, right? This is what makes people's immune systems upset. So when you're donating blood, you want to know who has an antibody to the antigen on your red blood cells, right? So if I have type A blood, I have the A antigen, right? So who does not have the A antigen on the red blood cells? Well, people with B and people with O do not have the A antigen on the red blood cells. And so they're going to have the anti-A antibodies, right? And so what's happening is my red blood cells is going to mix with their plasma. If their plasma has an anti-my red blood cell antibody, I'm in trouble, right? And so type A, if it goes in type O or B, right, they're going to have an anti-A antibody. And so it's going to start punching holes in these red blood cells. They're going to leak out and they're going to um, clump together. And so this is really bad. I do not want to give type A blood to somebody with B and O blood, right? An example I like to give in terms of blood type is pretend your blood type is an infection. Pretend you have hepatitis A. Who wants to get blood from somebody with hepatitis A? Well, if I only have hepatitis B, uh, you know, I might have hep B, but I don't want hep A as well. I, I don't want your blood, right? If I have hepatitis A and B, no problem. You know, I'm not worried that you just have hepatitis A. I already have that, right? Matter of fact, I also have hepatitis B, right? That's not an issue. But if I don't have hepatitis A or B, right? Um, you know, my blood doesn't have any of those infections. I don't want them, right? And so I'm not going to be okay with getting hepatitis A infected blood. Oh, no. Now, type A blood really is not infected with hepatitis A, but if you pretend that it is, it makes a lot of sense. Now, who can type B get blood from? Well, if you pretend that if you have uh, type B, that means you have hepatitis B. It doesn't really, but if you pretend, it makes a lot of sense. So if I have hepatitis B, uh, who can you give blood to? Who wants to have hepatitis B? Well, hepatitis A doesn't want it, right? Look, I might have hepatitis A, but I don't want hepatitis B too. That That's a problem. Oh, no. Right? Hepatitis A, B, who cares? Already got hepatitis B, right? I don't care that you don't have hepatitis A. I already got hepatitis B, that, that's good enough for me. I'm fine with that, right? You can always give to yourself, right? So if you have just hepatitis B, you don't care that the person also just has hepatitis B, all right? Now, if you don't have hepatitis A or B, you know, you don't want hepatitis B. So who can somebody with type AB blood? Well, pretend they have hepatitis A and B. If you just had hepatitis A, would you want some blood from somebody with hepatitis A and B? You wouldn't worry about the uh, hepatitis A, but you sure wouldn't want the hepatitis B. It's like, look, I got hepatitis A, not a problem, but I don't have hepatitis B and I don't want it. So I don't want your blood, right? Somebody with type B blood, could they get blood from somebody with type AB blood? Well, pretend once again, it's hepatitis A and B. I don't have problems with the hepatitis B because I already have it. I sure don't want hepatitis A, you can keep the blood, right? Now, if you have both hepatitis A and B, you don't care that the person giving you blood has both hepatitis A and B, you already got it. Now, type O, you don't have hepatitis A or B, and you don't want either one, right? And so you're not gonna be okay with this. Now, who can type O give blood to? All right, so O, once again, we're pretending that this doesn't have any infections. So if you have hepatitis A, are you going to be upset that you got blood from somebody without hepatitis A? No, you're going to be totally fine with it. B, if you had hepatitis B, are you going to be upset that the person that gave you blood doesn't have hepatitis B? No, right? I'm not going to go down the blood like, he didn't have hepatitis B, that's messed up, right? No, I'm going to be totally fine with it, right? Somebody with hepatitis A and B, they're going to be okay getting blood from somebody without any infections, right? And once again, you can always give to yourself. So that, in a sense, is going to be how 
the ABO works in terms of blood donation. Now, let's say that you have type A blood. Who can you receive blood from? And by blood, once again, we mean the red blood cells. All right, so you want people that only have the infections that you got. You don't want any extra infections. These aren't really infections, but if you think about it that way, it makes all the sense of the world. So hepatitis, uh, type A blood, pretend that's hepatitis A. This is the only infection I want. I don't want hep B, uh, I don't want hep B, right? It's okay that you have hep A, I already got that. But you, you also have hep B, I'm not okay with that. You don't have any infections, I'm okay with that. So type A blood can get blood from A and O. What about type B blood? Look, I already got hepatitis B, I don't want anything extra. I'm not gonna be okay with getting blood from somebody with A because I'm thinking that's an infection. I don't want hep A, right? B, you already got it. Who, who cares that you have hep B? I, I got that too, all right? Type AB blood, I'm okay with this uh, hep B, but I don't want hep A, I'm not okay with that, right? So, you know, I'm not gonna take your blood. All right, type O, you don't have any infection, that's okay. So type B, they can get blood from um, type B and O, all right? Uh, type AB, right? You have both the A and the B antigen. Once again, pretend these are infections. All right, you're gonna be okay with getting blood from type A, why? Oh, look, we both have hepatitis A, not a problem. You're gonna be okay with getting blood from hep B. Right? Oh, we both have it, not a problem, right? Type AB, yeah, we both have hepatitis A and B, not an issue, I got that too. Type O, not a problem. Like, your blood doesn't have any infections in it, A-okay. Again, these are questions, but if you think about it that way, it makes all the sense in the world. Now, who can type O get blood from, right? Well, if you're not infected, you don't want infections. So you're not gonna be okay with getting blood from somebody who only has hep A. You're not gonna be okay with getting blood from somebody who only has hep B. You're not gonna be okay, you're definitely not gonna be okay with somebody that has both hep A and B. That's the worst possible person to get blood from. But you are going to be okay with getting blood for somebody that doesn't have any infections. All right, that concludes today's episode. If you liked what you heard, be sure to click the subscribe and like button down below. And as always, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, or if there's any particular topic you'd like me to create a video on, let me know in the comments down below. All right, well, I look forward to seeing you on my next podcast.